Hi, this is a video to show how I made this pumpkin Halloween scene. It took a lot longer than I was hoping, but that's probably worth bearing in mind that when you have a project, always double the time you think it's going to take. So there's the topology for my first pumpkin. At first I did a boolean and then a re-sculpt and then a re-topology. Uh, it was all a bit fiddly. There are my reference images, it's important to have your reference images as I always say. And of course I'm setting up the multi-resolution modifier. That's why it's really good to have good topology and then the multi-resolution modifier can kick in and do its thing. And you don't need too many subdivisions if you've got good topology. So I'm sharpening the edges with the crease brush, holding down control so it becomes a pinch brush. And I'm working on the creases uh, for the different parts of the pumpkin. I did smooth the whole thing out to start with because the multi-resolution modifier, if you've got lower topology, it can sort of create a bumpy kind of effect. And this is the great thing about the multi-resolution modifier, that you can use these brushes, these alpha brushes. And there's a good amount on textures.com, and I found several others just generally around the place. Pinterest is another good place to find them. That's where I do all my reference images and mood boards. And the types of brushes I use are pretty random. I'm using rock alphas, skin alphas, dirt, wood, all sorts. So here I am on my second pumpkin and doing the same process. If I wasn't recording at the same time I'd probably gone up another subdivision. I'm on about a million and a half faces and if I subdivide again it's somewhere near four million and then the screen capture starts lagging and the program starts lagging a bit as well. The higher the face count I've noticed as well uh, the more difficult it has when baking and the more likely you are to have a few errors. So where possible keep it under 2 million faces depending on your graphics card. So the same process again, start with that crease brush and then getting the alphas this is with a really low strength, just to sort of give it some organic texture. When sculpting, don't go too far away from your base mesh as well, otherwise you'll have difficulty when you come to bake the normals. Which is another good reason for the using the multi-resolution modifier. I will be breaking down the process and doing more detailed tutorials in the future. So here you can see I'm sorting out my topology just to make sure it links up and matches up with my high poly mesh. So I did a duplicate of the low poly. And you can see I'm trying where possible to make sure it's outside of the high poly and I'm just tidying up my topology there which is a bit loose. Of 
That's one thing I think I need to work on a bit more is my uh, retopo. It helps as well if you're doing organic modeling, you get a nicer bake if you don't have really sharp edges. And if you do, that's where you should put your creases. And here's the unwrap. It is better to unwrap by hand rather than doing a smart UV project because then you know exactly where the creases are going and you can kind of adapt your painting and so forth for those creases. Also it's great to have a crease where a texture ends and a new texture begins because then you can select those faces and only paint on those selected faces. And there's the normal map bake. It took quite a while and I'll do a separate video on baking normal maps later on. So I didn't want to show the whole process here. There's a lot of waiting around for the normal map to appear. And now I'm painting the roughness map. A roughness or glossy map depends what workflow you're using. They're both the same thing, just the inverse of each other. They're really important, even if you're only getting just a noise texture on there, just to add some variation of reflection is vital. I also did a subsurface scattering map, which is just white for the bits that are more translucent in a way, and black for those bits that aren't, so the skin is uh, less translucent than the inside gooey bits, especially as I'm putting a light inside each of the pumpkins. And also on Sketchfab, um, I wanted to test out their new subsurface scattering feature. So now I'm painting the colours, again vital to look at your reference images all the time. I've got a separate screen with my reference images on. And I like to paint in a tiny bit of ambient occlusion. With colour ramps you can change the effects of your alpha maps, which are your black and white images. So here are the two pumpkins together and now I'm starting to think about the lighting. And you can see there's a very big difference between the subsurface scattering the two objects. So I use a color ramp to change the intensity of that. And now I'm starting on my tree trunk. I used a subdivided cube and then got the basic shape and then went across to the Dime Topo Sculpt. A slightly different workflow this time. So from the Dime Topo Sculpt I have to decimate the mesh to reduce the vertices once I've finished that basic sculpt and then when I'm adding those detailed brushes I need to put it into a multi-resolution modifier subdivide it probably only once because it's probably a high poly mesh and then you can use the more detailed alpha brushes for the minor details.
so there we go I decimated it so it's a bit more low poly then add the multi resolution modifier very slightly tidy up the mesh because the decimation might cause slight inaccuracies so if you've got any dark spots on your mesh you just have to use the smooth brush on them and again using a variety of brushes here, rock brushes skin brushes and lots of other brushes that I find around the place and the main thing is to experiment a bit and have fun Don't just rely on the alpha brushes, keep looking at your reference images, here I'm using the crease brush for the veins of the tree. And here I'm actually using a lizard skin brush for a bit of bark. I started to rush a tiny bit at this point. I would have liked to experiment a bit more with the lizard skin brush and had chunks of bark extruding from the surface. So I'm just tidying up the mesh, making sure it overlaps. And at this point, I think actually the decimated Dyntopo is too high poly to be used as my base mesh, my low poly mesh to bake onto. And the topology is very bad with the Dyn Topo, so the bake might have errors. I'm not sure this technique of retopo was the best choice. I used the cube and then extruded it and had the high poly mesh wireframe as my guide then I used the shrink wrap to push it all together and started using the snapping tools it kind of worked but it might have been a longer process than the more traditional of building up planes around your model that's one thing I would like to experiment with more. I hear there are a lot better tools for retopology, uh, a few plugins. Some you have to pay for, but some are free. The one that I want to try next is the B Surface plugin, and that one uses the grease pencil to draw on your mesh. You can see me occasionally grabbing a group of vertices. So I select a group and then press G to grab and then it snaps it to the mesh. But you have to be a bit careful that you're not going round corners otherwise you get um, errors and overlapping topology. And I'm finally getting there, tidying up the mesh. Again, making sure there's not too many stretches in my topology. And then I go on to the painting. So I've obviously baked my normal map now. I've plugged it into the principal shader. And I've got my viewport set to material so I can see my normal map in the viewport. It's a bit glitchy, you can see the black lines in places, but I think it works well enough for me to be able to paint on. I'm painting in the ambient occlusion and the highlights with the screen brush and the multiply brush. Uh, rushing this a little bit, 
as I was running out of time. And this is one area that I would have liked to have spent a lot more time on. I'm using the color map as the roughness map. I took it into Photoshop, added a black and white filter, and then just changed the settings slightly. Now I'm setting up the rest of the scene. The ground plane was just a, a plane that was subdivided. Putting my pumpkins into place and making sure the lighting is set up correctly. This is all to go across to Sketchfab. I thought I'd take part in their Halloween competition this week. Now I'm bringing in the lights, I can start checking the things like the subsurface scattering and any roughness maps using the sliders to help me get the right look. Now I'm bringing in the plant alpha images these are from textures.com. The ground plane is from Polygon. They have great texture packs that you can use and some of them are free. And now I'm setting up the lighting. It's a three point lighting setup and fairly dim with quite a strong blue tint to sort of give the idea of moonlight. The main light I wanted this in the scene is from the candles and I use a point lamp to sort of fake the light that they're giving off. And there we have it, the finished scene, which you can also see on Sketchfab. If I were to do the process again, I'd spend a lot more time on the trunk and use a different type of retopology. I will be going into more detail with things like baking and there are links for texture painting and retopology in the description. I'll also try and remember to put my node set up as a link in the description, along with other things. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.